Ladies and gentlemen, the U.S. heavily depends on tourism, especially to national parks. Yellowstone is probably the biggest moneymaker in the U.S. You have people traveling not only across the country, but from other nations coming just to see Yellowstone Park. Well, this year, many of you know, it was hit by heavy rain and flooding. And I'm not talking about a little teeny area. It's hundreds of miles that is completely devastated by just that one storm that hit the park. So they were anticipating making, you know, a, a good amount of money on tourism over the summer like they always do. Well, the tourism is literally drying up now. I have some audio that I want you to listen to from the Wall Street Journal. After floods, Yellowstone girds for a dry tourist season. Nearby communities rely on summer tourism dollars that are in jeopardy as the park remains closed. By Alyssa Luke Pat and Allison Povol. June 17, 2022, 10.16 a.m. Eastern Time. Local businesses around Yellowstone National Park are bracing for a difficult summer after heavy rains and floods damaged hundreds of miles of park land. The park remains shut, and officials said the northern reaches, which bore the brunt of the deluge, may be closed for months. They worry tourists are canceling their travel plans. Businesses around the park rely on summer tourism dollars to carry them throughout the year. Yellowstone, with its famed geysers and bison herds, is one of the main draws to the corridor linking northwest Wyoming, southern Montana, and eastern Idaho. Guests can enter from one of five designated spots in Wyoming and Montana. At some of these spots and elsewhere, rivers overflowed and sent mudslides and cascades of water throughout the park, washing away bridges, roads, and at least one home. The drinking water wasn't safe to consume in many areas after a water main broke, County officials said on Facebook earlier this week, Flying Pig Adventure Company offers rafting tours near the park. Its customers are canceling in droves, even worse than in the tough time early in the COVID-19 pandemic, said owner Patrick Sipp. We are going to dig deep and do everything in our power to make things come together and have some form of a season, Mr. Sipp said. The timing couldn't have been worse for Yellowstone, the country's first national park. In March, Yellowstone marked its 150th anniversary as a national park, and it was preparing for a wave of summer visitors seeking outdoor vacations as COVID-19 continues to circulate. The entrances to the park run through small towns. On Wednesday, Kristen Jures, Montana's acting governor, said they stand to lose millions of dollars if tourists stay away. The subsequent economic losses to these communities will be significant and long-lasting, she said. Yellowstone sees a million visits in a typical summer month. Last year, more than 4.8 million people visited the park, which spans 2.2 million acres, according to the National Park Service. This week already, more than 10,000 visitors who were inside Yellowstone evacuated after the flooding started, Cam Shali, the park superintendent, said at a press conference, a date for reopening the park hasn't been set. When the park reopens, only about half of its 400 miles of roads will be available to visitors because of the damage, Mr. Shawley said, in a call with community members Thursday. Mr. Shawley said the Southern Loop is considering a reservation system to access the park, but it wouldn't be there for three to four weeks. In the interim, park officials are considering how to limit capacity and might restrict overnight accommodations in the park. They plan to announce any changes in the coming days. Local businesses are already feeling squeezed. Montana's Park County has two of Yellowstone's five entrances. Bill Berg, a county commissioner, said officials there are still assessing damage to infrastructure and resources from the flooding. Businesses in Gardner, Montana, are concerned about the long-term effects of the closure of the park's northern section. The Gardner lifestyle is such that you know to hang onto your pennies over the winter and save enough so you can hire people and open the doors in the spring, Mr. Berg said. Businesses were just starting to see summer tourism pick up after Memorial Day. Local owners aren't sure they'll be able to hold on to employees if they can't guarantee jobs, much less stay open if they don't have any cash flow, he said.
Billy Taylor's Yellowstone Rough Riders has a permit for tours in the park and offers horseback rides as well as overnight pack trips throughout Yellowstone's backcountry. With the north entrance closed, that permit is obsolete, she said. Ms. Taylor said she had to lay off her six employees and has decided to sell half of her herd of horses so she can keep her horses fed while determining what to do next. She worries about what might happen if travelers can't get into the park through the entrance in Gardner. I fear as Gardner is going to fall off the map, she said. Because of the flooding, some travelers and tour operators are retooling their plans, even as they remain hopeful about access to the park. Tammy Brown and her family have been planning their coming visit to Yellowstone for two years. They rented a huge house in Cody, Wyoming, she said. We can't get out of it, a 53-year-old Cottage Grove, Minnesota resident said. So we have to go. She and her husband, children and grandchildren had planned to spend at least two days in the park, and they still might be able to get in depending on when it reopens. Otherwise, they will spend their time in Cody and wing it, she said. We're going with good attitudes, she said. Dan Austin, the founder of the outdoor vacation company Austin Adventures in Billings, Montana, said his company didn't plan to cancel its coming trips to Yellowstone. None of his customers had canceled their trips as of Wednesday afternoon, he said. But to account for the flooding, his company was changing its itineraries to avoid areas of the park he expects will remain closed. There's also a whole ecosystem outside of the park, he said. We'll adjust quickly and save their vacations. Ms. Taylor, who owns Yellowstone Rough Riders, said that even if the gardener entrance to the park stays closed, she is hopeful that travelers will consider coming to the area. Even though you can't get into the park through there, she said, traveling to the town itself could save a family business. Write to Alyssa Lupad at alyssa.lupad at wsj.com and Allison Pohol at allison.pohol at wsj. Well, y'all. They are scared. And they said that, you know, surrounding towns all around Yellowstone heavily depend on the tourist season. You know, this is their money for the entire year that's made during the summer months. And as you could, you know, hear in the audio, 4.5 million people went through there just last year alone. I mean... That's a big behind park. No, I'm sorry, 4.8 million. 4.8 million. And they said the park is 2.2 million acres. That is an insane amount of land. It really, truly is. But y'all, please tell me what you think, because America sure going to take a black eye this summer over this. You know? And who knows, you know, a lot of times it's difficult going through one bad year. And look, it just took one storm, one storm with torrential rains and a lot of flooding to take down this 2.2 million acre park. One storm. Only the Heavenly Father can do it. Y'all, please tell me what you think about this story and what's going on over in Yellowstone. Look like America's going to be losing out big time this year. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.